Hello and welcome to another episode of Conscious Aging. I am Heidi from the wisdomfactory.net and today my guest is Tony Lamotte. He is talking about embracing the aging process. And before we talk about that, I give over to you and you tell me a little bit about you and why you are interested in all these things <laughs> in conscious aging. Uh, and, you know, a little bit about your background and where you are also. Okay. Okay. I am Tony Lamata and I, I'm, I live in the United States in Florida, in Sarasota, Florida, which is one of the 10, the world's 10 best beaches is here. So it's quite a beautiful place and, and I'm grateful to be here. And and it's also a big aging population. There are many people who move here to retire. And so it's, it's a very interesting community. We are filled with arts, many of the different uh, theater background, which are things that I love. And many of the people are patrons of the arts. So that's been wonderful too. I have a very interesting background. I grew up as a Roman Catholic and when I was, 17, I entered a convent and I spent 18 years as a Roman Catholic nun. So I come from a very unusual, different background. And yeah. over the years, uh, for a number of years, I got involved in a house of prayer community. And I discovered that I loved doing sermons and preaching. We went around the country giving parish missions. And I was in my 20s. I was a kid and I was doing these things and absolutely loved it. So that's where I discovered my passion for speaking. And from there, I eventually left the religious life and, and left the Catholic Church and moved into um, the New Thought movement. And New Thought, just to briefly explain, is it's a denomination unto itself, but it really is, it's an umbrella for a number of different, uh, we call them, well, I guess you could say they're religions. It's more of philosophy, but unity, religious science, and divine science are the three major ones. And I became a religious science minister. And to this day, I ran churches for 25 years. And I have since retired from that and took up uh, one of the things I loved doing while I was doing church was the opportunity to counsel people and to be in, to really be in a listening mode with them and to help them in their spiritual development. And so that's something that I kept on after I left. And so I still am, now we call it a life coach or a spiritual life coach is what I like to say, because I'm really helping people. Um, the process that I discovered many years ago, I went to Columbia University and went for a doctoral program in adult and continuing ed. I never actually finished. I'm what they call an ABD, all but the dissertation. But then I went on and got a doctorate in religious studies. But when I was at Columbia, I got very interested in the process of adult development. And it became something that I researched and discovered, I mean, just a great love for it. Over the years, I have continued that study and I eventually segued into the work of Ken Wilber and studied the integral teaching. So, um, and then I found it so fascinating. I also studied with a woman named um, Terry, and I'm blanking on her last name right now. I'll think of it in a few minutes, but, um, and she and her brother run workshops on the, the stages of development. She's done it a little differently than most other Terry people. O'Fallon. Terry O'Fallon. Terry O'Fallon. Thank you. Terry O'Fallon. <laughs> exactly. And I loved studying with her, took her instrument and, and got very involved and, and, and just, uh, but in this time, I called myself the midlife mentor. And, you know, I was studying how to, how to work online. And so they told you you had to get a, a name that was catchy and I put it all over. So I'm the midlife mentor on Twitter and Facebook and all those places. And I eventually started working with people 
in midlife looking at aging. And initially I was talking about how to get through midlife and, and a lot of the people were of midlife age. And then I started working with, an, as I got older, I worked with an older clientele as well. So I became fascinated with, you know, wait a minute, look at all this adult development. What does it mean for the aging process? And especially, you know, how different is, is what I understand from what the world teaches you about aging. How, you know, aging means your body's going to start decaying and you're going to have all kinds of problems. And, and those things are true. That happens at times. And I don't think we can deny that. But at the same token, we can look at it from a whole different perspective. So I started looking at, for myself, how to embrace the aging process. You know, I wound up having, I'm a bionic woman. I have both hips replaced, both knees replaced, you know, a bunch of things that quote went wrong in my body. And I needed to find ways to, to deal with that. And in dealing with it in myself, people were asking me, how do you deal with it? And I got to teach other people. I eventually wrote a course and started a blog. And my blog really has more of other people's ideas. So Heidi, I'm delighted to see your work because I will share that with my readers as well. And I do put out a newsletter and most of the time I'm sending other people's things rather than reinventing the wheel. But I also did put together a book called Embracing the Aging Process, as well as a course that I have online and I teach that and I have several videos and things that, and primarily I teach four things. And I let you stop me at any time at this point. Uh, um, but the four, the four oh, aspects, fine. okay, the four aspects that I'm teaching are, first of all, looking at the fear. I think we need to start there because most people have a fear of aging because of the myths that we've heard about aging. And so I spend time dispelling those myths. And I mm -hmm. studied a number of them and it was very interesting. And the main thing that I discovered that there is actual research to show that the things that we think are going to decline are only declining because we think they're going to decline. <laughs> so <laughs> it's very, it is, it, and this, uh, there's scientific studies from women from Harvard. So I was thrilled to see that and said, you know, what I've been teaching all these years about, it, it's all in your mind <laughs> in a lot of ways um, is, is somewhat true here. Although not necessarily, I mean, consciousness is so much bigger than I think any of us can grasp and why things happen is, is a challenge. But anyway, I have a couple of processes that I teach. And in religious science, we teach a method of prayer um, that's called treatment, which is a way of treating our mind to know the truth. And so when I do the fear to faith process and help people through their fears, what I'm doing is helping them see who they really are and getting and to their essence. I want to come in here now. That's it's super interesting. First of all, I wanted to ask you if you know uh, Paul Smith. And oh, Integral absolutely. Yes. And, and that's how we connected. Paul Smith, um, in the process of teaching, I also teach, I teach at a university. I teach critical thinking. I also teach uh, in our ministerial school for future ministers. And I mm -hmm. introduce them to integral theory because it's not something any of our other ministers really do, um, or some of them do, I shouldn't say none, but some of them do. Hmm. And in doing that, I started to read, I, and, and I'm on integrallife.com and I read a lot of that work. And I read some things by Paul, especially on the three faces of God. I was so impressed when I learned that, because in New Thought, we do not teach a personal God. I mean, we say God is personal, but it's kind of a, a head trip more than anything else. So mm -hmm. I taught that to my students and they were blown away and relieved. It was like, oh, that God that I miss, <laughs> you know, from my childhood. And, and so mm -hmm. I wrote to Paul and told him how impressed I was with his work. He looked me up, he looked up my blog 
and ordered my book, read my book, and wrote back and told me how much my book helped him, which is totally Paul. You know, he always puts it back. So anyway, and from there, I now am involved in his We Space organization and, mm -hmm. and working with him in his seminars and, and love it. And I'm going back to my own Christian roots. You know, religious science doesn't call itself Christian. It it's you can call yourself a Christian, but we label Christian very differently than the rest of the world does in a way. Um, and we say, you know, Jesus is the divine example rather than the exception is the way we describe it. And I felt like Paul's life mimicked my own. So right now I'm learning from him again and it's delightful. And just looking at how to integrate the, the Christian roots that I was so familiar with, with the teachings that I'm doing now and how it all fits. And he's brilliant. It is, it is so important in my opinion, because we threw out the baby with the bathwater <laughs> when we wanted to get away from church. Certainly church, when you uh, go on in your development, the church we knew is not the right thing anymore. But mm -hmm. so we were left alone and then people went to all sorts of other religions, which always seemed to me a little bit like fashion. You know, it didn't seem right to me being grown in a totally Christian context for 2000 years and still living there and then embracing another religion so i decided not to have a religion at all you know okay. <laughs> and now with this uh i i actually i i told that also to paul and to luke um i came back to christianity by jordan peterson and his biblical lectures and yeah. their psychological interpretations and that <laughs> opened me up to the how do you say, to the value of Christianity, because we have the tendency uh, to see only the bad things. Instead, there are many good things too. And this has really allowed me to, to, to come back, at least be interested in it. It's not that I go to church or something like this, you know, but uh, I find finally with Integral, we can come back to our roots as you describe it. That's wonderful. Yeah, exactly. And because you see it all good. And I see where I was as a, you know, the mythic, mystical child. And, you know, that was good. That was where I was. And, you know, when I left that, and as you said, why throw the baby out with the bathwater? When I teach the uh, minist minist future ministers, Many of them come from like Baptist churches or, and so I introduce Paul's work to them because, uh, and what they, what they all say to me at the end is, oh my gosh, I can, I can honor my roots and I don't have to just throw them away because this new teaching is not different. It's just an extension. And Ernest Holmes, who is the founder of religious science, quotes Jesus all the time. And, you know, the Bible is all over the place. So it doesn't mean to exclude anything, but to transcend and include. And so I think, that, you know, I'm learning that in my own life. And I think that that's part of what happens in the aging process is that we, we come to discover who we truly are. And we come to discover... and. Terry O'Fallon's work really says this, I think, better than anything else I read, that as we age, we get more spiritual. We may not call it that, but the higher levels of adult development are all spiritual levels. And the higher up you go, the, the greater your understanding, the oneness with all of life. And so <clears throat> it's, I, that's part of what I'm teaching in embracing the aging process too, to notice everything has a spiritual meaning to it. So that it's, you know, if you're dealing with like people, and I've met many people who have macular degeneration as part of the aging process in their eyes. And what they tell me is that their insight has gotten so much stronger now that their mm -hmm. eyesight is less. And that's the kind of thing I want people to recognize that there's a spirituality to aging and that everything that happens to us or seems to be happening to us, I don't think anything happens to us, but uh, it's, 
it's an opportunity to look at the gift and to see, you know, I helped a person in, through transition recently. And mm -hmm. every time she was having all kinds of difficulties physically, I, I say to her, what's the gift? And at first, mm -hmm. of course, she balked and said, this is not a gift. I have cancer. I, you know, and eventually <clears throat> she would laugh and said, I know what you're going to ask me. And yes, mm -hmm. you know, I'm learning things that I have really needed to learn. And it's the letting go of the, the, I don't like to use the word ego because I think so many people see it as negative and I don't see it totally negative, but letting go of the lower self so that we can become more and more who we are. And I think that that's what aging really is about. When you age consciously, you are growing spiritually more, more so than I think any other time in our life. We're learning, I'm learning right now, um, all of my friends are busy. They're running around all the time and doing a hundred things and I'm not anymore. Mm -hmm. Suddenly life has become, it's almost boring, it's a little scary. And I keep saying, what am I missing? But I know part of my learning is about learning to be and stop all the doing. Um, yeah. Many years ago, when I when I did Can have I a hip say something in, sure, in sure. between, <laughs> <laughs> I think the the gift of aging and the gift of death at the end is exactly this: that we go, that we are forced somehow. Not everybody uh, does that and tries to defend themselves, but naturally we would be forced to th think about life to think about who we really are and what does it mean to have this body which then dies, you know? And so it's automatically for me that the spirituality comes, comes in because these questions are, yeah, maybe philosophical, but also spiritual. And then we have to find a way to deal with death, with death of other people and with our own death. And the, the fear is there, but we need to, to, to find a way to, to calm the fear and understand what, you know, what, what, what that means for our life, even if we don't believe in an afterlife or in another life and so on. But it can shine back on our present life, this, this, these insights which we have, and to make our present life better. And what you say better in a different thing, not financial or something, uh, what you say that you need to learn to be instead of to do. I think this is such an important thing, such an important thing. And sometimes it really sounds like boring. <laughs> sounds like what? When you think, like boring, when you oh, stay boy. there and, 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 and uh, watch, uh, oh, nothing to do today. Yeah, I could do this, I could do this. Uh, uh, uh. So to find the right way of becoming, um, Becoming beings. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's interesting because when I, I had one of my hips replaced, the day after the surgery, my femur broke. And I wound up, then I got an infection. I wound up in a hospital and rehab center for three months, flat on my back, unable to move. They had to lift me with a crane and I'm a big woman, so it was quite a challenge. But and it was a challenge for me the whole time I was there. Everybody kept saying, you're probably having a spiritual experience. I, I couldn't have a spiritual experience if I tried. At that moment, I was watching sitcoms and I was laughing, you know, trying to get myself through it. But eventually I stopped and said, okay, what's the gift here? I tell that to everybody else. So, and I almost, I don't hear voices, but I heard the words, there's nowhere to go. There's nothing to do. And I started to laugh and I said, well, yeah, I can't move, nowhere to go, nothing to do. And it just kept going over and over. There's nowhere to go, there's nothing to do. And I wake up every day with that mantra now. And what, what it does is not so much that there's nowhere to go at all and, and nothing to do at all, but it's like it prioritizes the important things in life and it makes, makes me stop and say, am I just doing for the sake of doing, or is this an inspired action? And to me, that doing is has to be, in, yeah. 
constant. important for all stages of life, uh, in my opinion. But when we get older, we have to think a little bit more about it because I think when you have family and you have so much to do, you really have, no, with children and so on, that you cannot stop. Uh, at first, you cannot stop because you don't have time, and later you keep yourself busy because you know that way of being. And then, if it seems to you that when you don't do anything useful or anything at all, then that's uh, a waste of time and a waste of your energy, a waste of your life. And this is really difficult to understand that it might not be that maybe by getting inside, going inside, developing spiritually, spiritually, yeah, um, then uh, we might even contribute to the world, but in a different way, you know. And I used to visit hospice patients and they would say to me, why is this happening? And I would say, just your being is your presence to all the nurses and everybody around means so much. And, and now I laugh because I have to say it to myself. And it's, it's been very, it's been powerful. I'm, that's the, the lesson I'm in process of learning. I can't say I'm totally there yet, but that is the major lesson. And of course, I then teach what I'm learning. And it's the only thing we can do. Um, there's another aspect to my, the work that I've done, and that's, that's about doing a life review. And I think it's really important um, at any age, but especially as we get to a transition from the busyness to the doingness, uh, to the being, it's an important thing to say, what, what does my life wish to become? And I studied with a man named Ira Progoff. You know his work at all? No, Ira I Progoff don't. actually was a, um, I guess he was a psychologist, taught at Drew University and studied the creative life of people. He studied with Carl Jung, the Swiss mm -hmm. psychoanalyst, and he created a method called the Intensive Journal. And it is a very intense program. I have since modified it and I teach my own version of it. I call it transformative journaling, but it's an opportunity to look at what has happened in your life that still wants to happen in some way? So we look at things like decisions we made and see if the opposite decision still has potential. Because oh, if you're alive, you've got potential. There's something mm -hmm. else, and, and I'm going to use the word to do, but it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, busyness. And so the journaling techniques, it's a, it's a series of journaling techniques that I highly recommend to people. And then in my book, I, I give some examples of how to do some of this process. Even Jane Fonda, if you're familiar with Jane Fonda, talks about the importance of a life review. And, you know, she... And, and this she, is when I come into here for a moment. This is sure. extremely interesting what you say, you do it differently. Normally you write your memoirs and then you pick out only the good things to, to publish it to the people. Or what happens to me or happened to me, uh, thinking back and this, you know, from a negative perspective, thinking I didn't uh, succeed to do this, and I didn't arrive at that, and this was not, and this was a failure, without thinking that, Maybe it was not a failure, only that you had your goals too, too high in the sky, you know, and what you did, you did, and it, it was okay, you know, but this is a different life review than the one you are talking about, so I'm yeah. very curious, can you tell me a little more? His best sentence, I loved, he always said, what does my life wish to become? If we're still alive and breathing, there's something, like even in what we call failure. Um, by the way, when I teach my students and they fail, I always say fail means the first attempt in learning. So if there was something that we did not accomplish at some point in our life, there may be a time now to do some, maybe not the exact same thing, but the essence of what that was that we were missing, you know, or 
something that you, well, just like when we talked about with religion, you know, to go back to the roots and look at some of the things that, that still call you, you know, even for fun. I'm, I lately picked up jigsaw puzzles. I haven't done jigsaw puzzles since I'm a little kid. I am doing on, they have them online now. I do one online every day. It's the most fun I've had in a long time. It's very interesting. Just little things like that. You reminded of what gave you joy. And if you can't do it in the same way, you find, you know, what was the essence? Uh, because one of the things that I think is a challenge with aging is that we think, I can't. And here, I, I, this is what I used to do, but I can't do it anymore. Instead of saying, why did I do what I used to do? What was I looking for from that? And how can I get that same experience doing something different? And I work with people to find that for themselves. And it, it's amazing that we can't, like the, it was not doing that thing that was so wonderful. It was what it gave to us. And so we want then to do the thing, we want to get that same experience, not necessarily do it the same way. And that's yeah. part of what a life review does. Uh, mm -hmm. It's super, super interesting. I heard somebody else saying, even if you are 90 and you wanted to become a dancer, do it. Maybe not in the way you would have done it as a 10-year-old um, or 15-year-old or 20-year-old. And even if you do it only in your, in your mind to dance, and this I found really amazing uh, suggestion. <laughs> exactly. So what you, there are some limits to, to, to the body. So we, I won't become a concert pianist anymore, you know. But in my case, I could go back to singing somehow. And I know that's lurking behind the, um, the corner, but I don't know how. <laughs> well, it's been an interesting one for me too, because in, I just recently taught one of these life review classes and in it I shared with them that I used to be a singer I used to write music and sing my voice has dropped like an octave it's very different I don't like singing anymore but you know what doesn't mean I can't listen to more music and it doesn't mean that I can't hum along when I'm home and nobody has to be hearing me I don't have to be performing in the same way I once did you know, and I played a guitar. I'm never going to play the guitar again. That's not, that's not it. But, you know, I can enjoy, I can enjoy music and I go to theater to watch cabarets now and just absolutely, and sing along with the cabaret sometime. So there are different ways. And that's what I'm talking about. You can have the same experience, but do it a little bit differently. Um, so that's, I mean, that's the third piece. I, I have four pieces. So I have one more piece. To, <laughs> what's our timing like? We're good? It's okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Okay. Well, the fourth piece is, is really preparing for death. And to, I think that to be conscious aging, that's where we're ending. So we might really want to take a look. I actually have my students write their own eulogy and write, pick the songs they want sung and, you know, the things that they want. I even have had ceremonies with people who may not be or may be close to dying we actually do a memorial service while they're alive and it's an amazing experience and a wonderful experience why wait till you're gone and you can't hear what everybody's going to say and the people i've done that with have been so grateful um because they gather all their friends and have a big party and, and you know and but but really taking the time to say what do i really want my life to have to have say and may, that's another way of looking at what is there still for me to do or what is there still calling me like who did i want to become and what is it that was so important so i even have them write their obituary and write the things, and that's another way of goal setting, in a sense, especially people in middle age, I have them do this, and, and write your obituary, what would you want the world to say you have accomplished, or who you were, 
And it becomes fascinating. And in my ministerial class, I have them do it for each other, which is really fascinating. They, they, you talk to someone else about it and tell them, and then they write your obituary and, and your eulogy and, um, and an epitaph. If you could set, sum up your life, or if you were writing a book, if somebody was writing a book about your life, what would the title be? And um, it's, it's really fascinating to me. I came up with many years ago when I was doing an exercise like this myself, I came up with a tagline, celebrating uniqueness. Um, no, now I'm forgetting it. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> expressing, or I, I'm totally blanking. That's really funny. Uh, celebrating oneness, uh, celebrating uniqueness, expressing oneness something like that. And they, I say it all the time and I can't do it right now, but that's fine. Uh, and that's part of the, part of the aging process. It's just very interesting, but it was really about uniqueness and oneness. <clears throat> Those two words have been a vital part of my life. And <clears throat> when I do the journaling, I found all the ways I used to teach typology in Myers-Briggs in corporations and help people understand their differences. And, you know, certainly in church, I help people understand their oneness. <laughs> so it's <laughs> been, and it's, it's a way of asking myself, is this what I want to be doing today? Does it celebrate uniqueness and recognize, recognizing oneness? That's, that's the word I was looking for. You know, and it's, um, it's fascinating to me. And people, if you can come up with a little tagline like that. I mean, people do it in business all the time. I have a business background. I've done some of these workshops in organizations. And now I'm applying it to the elderly process. And, and to take a look at, you know, how would you sum up your life? And it's a much more positive view than what we, you were talking about before, looking at what I haven't accomplished. Because truthfully, in the last month, thank you for saying that, because in the last month, I've been noticing all the things I haven't done. And, and I want to stop that. You know? So thank you for having me say that today so I can remember. Um, the truth is that you know, that's not the focus. You know, to focus on the things that didn't get finished or didn't get done. Um, there's been a gift in so many ways. I have been gifted in um, so many ways. It's am amazing. And the, the teaching so, and the learning. And, and now my only goal is just to be enlightened, you know, and, and, <laughs> and I can't do anything about that. That's what I've learned. You can't do anything. You just be and it, let life happen and watch it happen and then share yeah. that with other people as you get the opportunity. I mean, and people are grateful and they see it. I mean, I hadn't realized, you know, how many people see it in me that I don't even see in myself. So mm -hmm. I get to recognize, you know, the gift that I'm giving still, even though it looks different. That's wonderful, That's wonderful. yeah. And, um, I was thinking about this uh, writing the obituary for for yourself. This is a good exercise for for yourself, for your psychological well-being to understand what would other people say about me. You know, uh, two different things. As I said before, maybe you see yourself in a certain way, but in this case, somebody would say something nice about you. So, what would that be? And so it, it's, it's a, grow, um, a tool for growing in, before dying, I mean, in, in life. We can start with 15 to, to do this exercise. That would be really great even before. I mean, the whole life, we could think about how we are perceived from the others. And is there a gap between my self-perception and what can I do about it? Where do I want to go? And this is the journaling, what you are doing. This, this is really, really interesting. Yeah, it's Can you tell me more about journaling, how, how this is uh, structured? Oh, I can, talk, I can teach you some of the, talk about some of the techniques. One of the mm -hmm. simplest techniques that I start with people is what we call markings or stepping stones. And that is, mm -hmm you get the opportunity to pick 10 to 12 major events 
that have been significant in your life. Now, <clears throat> no matter how old you are, you only get 10 to 12. So it limits you. And every time I do that exercise, by the way, this is not a one-time thing, but every time you do that exercise, those stepping stones actually change. Sometimes they start out very simple. I was born, I went to school, I, you know, I graduated, I got married, I had children, you know, whatever. They're very simple, usually the first time you do it. One time when I did mine, I found myself describing the places that I lived. And sure enough, I was moving. I didn't realize it was time to move. But that's what my life was telling me as I wrote those stepping stones. Sometimes the stepping stones become people. You just write the people who were significant at those periods of your life. And then we do several things with that. One is you can actually do a dialogue with those people. And you literally write as if you're them and they are you. However, you write their stepping stones first. In order to do a dialogue with someone else, you need to get into their life and you have to know them well enough to be able to say, and probably wouldn't be the same stepping stones they would write, but you know, if I were writing, if I knew you better and I was writing to you, I'd have to know something more about your life. And so then I start a dialogue. Um, that's kind of oversimplified right now, but, but those are two of the techniques. Another way, <clears throat> and this I, I do a lot with, I'm going to be doing with my next ministerial class, is write their spiritual stepping stones. I'm teaching mm -hmm. a course on the history of new thought teaching. And I thought, what better way to start by then starting their own history? What is your spiritual history? And you write 10 to 12 events that have drawn your spiritual life. It's a fascinating study. It really is. And then you begin in the rest of the workshop and the exercises we do, you fill in the blanks. So <clears throat> if you wrote 12 periods of your life, you then take one period and you start fleshing it out. Think of all the people, the events, the situations you were in, <clears throat> excuse me, the learnings that took place during that time, the decisions that you made during that time, and you begin looking at, and usually you're drawn to write about a period of your life that wants to talk to you about now. The purpose of this is never to just ruminate about the past. It's always to look towards the now and the future. So when I'm writing, <clears throat> you know, I had a dream, and one of the things we do is, is record dreams. <clears throat> I had a dream the other night that I can't get, I usually don't remember my dreams and I didn't remember the whole dream, but I keep seeing myself in a hotel in front of an elevator. And when I go to press the numbers, half of the numbers are missing. I have no idea what that means, but I know that somewhere and I need to do more journaling on it and saying, because it won't go away. That image keeps coming up in my mind. And so this is the kind of thing that is like, um, <clears throat> it's, it's really grounding ourselves. I call, my, I call my workshop Conversations with Yourself because that's really mm -hmm. what it's about is like you're really talking to yourself about your life. And the students always say to me, it's always amazing what shows up in your writing. You had no consciousness that that was going to come out and that's what shows up. Um, I mentioned dialogues. One of the dialogues you can do is a dialogue <clears throat> with society. So you take examples. I happen to be Italian, so we are from Italy. I would have a dialogue with being Italian or a dialogue mm -hmm. with being an American, <clears throat> you know, and what those things mean to me or, or don't mean to me. And I have a history with that and a life with that. So what to me means Italian is the way I grew up. And <laughs> you wouldn't want to hear some of the things that I would describe as Italian because that's the experience I had, you know, in those, <clears throat> So you do those things. And when you're having a difficulty for something, 
for example, if someone's going through a divorce, I have them do a dialogue with the person they were married to. With the day of their wedding, you actually do a dialogue with that day. You do a dialogue with the event of being single, event of being married, and then with the divorce. I mean, you come at it from multiple perspectives so that what happens in the end is you get a rich, you know, rich understanding. This is, this process really is self-therapy. It's like um, Progoff used to say, you don't really need, healthy people really don't need a therapist if they do this work because your life wants to tell you what it wants and the answers are all within us anyway. So um, and that's what my students always say. They're thrilled when I say that the answers are within and you'll find them, but you have to look. I mean, you can't just say there's an answer there. You have to do some searching. So that's, yeah, that's you the, also, you need the tools, you know, you need the tools, just looking inside and not knowing what to, to look for is, is difficult. And so I'm interested, you do this in person, these courses, or do you do them also online? You know, I've never done one online, and I've been thinking about that. The, the challenge with online, it's like long periods of silence. So if I lead you in an exercise that says, <clears throat> well, when the first exercise, <clears throat> excuse me, the first exercise would be define the period of your life that you're currently in. That period might be one day, or it could be ever since you had that accident, ever since you got married, ever since you've been divorced. It could be 40 years, it could be two years, it could be two months. For everybody, it's different. But they define that period. And then I give them the directions, and then we go into silence for a half hour while people write. So I'm not sure how that would go online. You could do it. That's but, no problem. That's no problem. That's, uh, you can do that. You know. Well, maybe yeah. you and I should look at it and and offer a workshop. I would, you know, maybe I'd love we to. can do that together. And I, I, I do the technicalities. <laughs> that would be a good thing. And we can offer that to the people. Yeah, yeah. Let's, and let's I'll tell you, I actually, I happen, I happen to have my journal right here. Mm -hmm. Let me. We use a loose leaf binder and mm -hmm. it has multiple divisions. And oh, okay. every one of these divisions has a different way of, of writing. So in the first workshop, I don't teach all of the sections, but it's a 12 hour course. And sometimes I do it in three hour segments. Sometimes I can do it over a weekend. You can spend hours and hours. And the longer you spend, the deeper you go. I find when you do it over a weekend, people really get into it. Although it's tiring, it's very challenging to keep, keep up that intensity. Yeah. But um, it's something we ought to look at. And, and then there are advanced workshops you can give. I'm not a certified journal consultant. I was <clears throat> before Ira died, um, but when his son took over, I had never taken the class. Ira just let me teach it. So um, his, son, his son said, no, you can't be official consultant, but I can teach a lot of the method under my own auspices. Plus I use music too. I play some popular music or what I think is popular, some music that speaks to me. Um, often Barbara Streisand or somebody like that, I play music for different sections. And that really takes people into a deep space because the other thing that we do is a lot of what they call twilight imagery, which is helping people just get images. Like after you do the period about, you know, what, what's the period of your life right now, you do an imagery, an imaging about that period and then you try to correlate the images to what's actually happening. So you're working both at the depth of our being as well as the concrete realities of what's happening in life. And that's why I love this process. And I think it's really what's happening in the aging process. We are dealing with concrete things that are happening usually in our body, 
in our life because people around us are getting sick and they're dying and, and we're face to face with those things all the time. But at the same time, we want to look at the meaning dimension. That to me, you know, you just helped me define conscious aging in a new way. That's what it means to age consciously is to be in both, have a shoe in both, you know, courts. One is the concrete reality of what is happening without denying it and the other is looking at the the spiritual realm of what's really going on here and what's the message and what's the gift so lots yeah. of good stuff i do think that it is possible online with a platform like this one then you have the people here and then you can they can you can play the music and they write in the meantime, you know, and uh, that should be perfectly possible. Well, I know it could be done. I mean, I, I do. I even have a Zoom account myself. I use Zoom to to teach my classes and um, and I love it. You can be all over the world. I do have one person in England who said, as soon as you do one online, I want to take it. So, um, you know, and I been putting it off but yes let's talk about that look at it and and we can frame it under life review because that's really what it is it's looking mm -hmm. at every aspect of your life and it's a an invitation to to go within i it's powerful it's a powerful process yeah and also to make peace with what uh, with what has happened in our lives because it seems to be that when we die, uh, often there is a sort of life review in the last. And when we have done it already before, we are not so surprised, maybe. I don't know. That's yeah, just an idea. So. And maybe that's regret. You know, you also want to do, is there any forgiveness work that needs to be done? One of the things we teach in doing this work is that um, there's no judgment everything you write has a place in the journal without judgment. So nothing was, that was good, that was bad. If we can really learn to live without judgment. And I, I do think that's what integral teaching is, is really at about at core, is learning to just accept everyone, everything. And, it, you know, people are going through their process, whatever it is. And so even I've gone through and I, I have to learn to let go of my own judgments of myself. And the journal helps you do that. And it also helps you integrate your life because um, there's a woman who teaches that there are two kinds of beings. The person who is very organized and knows exactly their route, knows what they're doing. And then he, she calls them the, um, she doesn't use the word scatterer. What does she use? I'm, I'm blanking again on the word, but there's a word that describes some of us that jump from one thing to another to another. And I'm one of those people. It's like, I never stay with the same thing. I'm always into the next thing, you know? And, and I used to berate myself for it because, you know, the people who look successful are the ones who knew when they were five that they were going to be a doctor and they went and they got it and they did it and they, you know, and it looks from the outside world as more successful than those of us. Even as a professional speaker, I was on the speaking circuit for a while. I got bored talking about the same topic. So I had, I mean, as a minister, I had a new topic every week, you know, and the speaking profession, people used to say, how do you do that? I write another talk every single week. And I loved it like that. That's, you know, that fits me more than, um, you know, a scanner, I think is the word that she uses. Um, and when I did the journal workshop, every time I do it, it integrates my life. It puts together and says there is a connection. It's all connected somehow, even though to the outside world, if you looked at my background, it looks like, huh? <laughs> you know, where has she been? Uh, what is she doing? And, and yet, you know, I have a math degree as well. I have a master's degree in mathematics. And then I have this adult so I'm a, a whole brain person. I have some left brain, some right brain. I play with all of it. And it's, uh, the journal is like, wow, this is me. And it's okay. And I think that's a, a great gift and a gift we give ourselves. Yeah. And, and, and as yeah. we're aging, we have more time to, to reflect and to do that as well.
Yeah. yeah. Uh, by the way, I feel very akin to you in this. I'm, I'm the same one. I get bored with what I'm doing and then I do something else. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's well, a even the gift. aging stuff, Heidi. I have to tell you, I haven't been sending out my newsletter. And when um, when Luke said to me, "Would you like to meet with Heidi about conscious aging?" I was like, "Oh no, do I have to do that again?" But just talking to you, I'm it enlivened me just to even share it again because I do find yeah. these things and and they're I'm so used to them in my head; they don't sound so exciting. But seeing you get excited yeah. about them, you know. Yeah. Yes, I do. Because, uh, you know, it was, um, I need this excitement too. It was my husband's um, idea to do conscious aging because he was so ignited by the idea that he could live still 30 years or so. His mother was 100 when she died. Yeah. And so we did that together. And uh, during, I think it was the fourth season, he was very ill and then he died. And so I came to the idea, should I do it, continue with it or not? I'm not so much inspired of, about aging and maybe I can push it still a little bit away, you know, <laughs> and things like that. But then I decided to continue with that. And I find this um, personally, for me, for me, these uh, conversations very inspiring and very, you know, I'm, that's, that makes my day. <laughs> and I hope we can transmit this. I hope we can transmit this a little bit to the viewers, you know, that the intention is to get people inspired to talk about these things, which you normally don't talk about, you know, aging, death, ooh, no, no. And so get this into, let's say, public awareness, these topics, instead of um, hoping that it never will arrive. Right, right. <laughs> I have I have a series of books on my iPad on, on aging. I must have like a hundred books, and I've read almost oh, all wow. of them too. And it is, you know, the I think we really need to change the view of how people see aging. It's you know, it's like um, I think so many people miss it. I've been doing this program online to help me lose weight and. It's all about setting your goals and getting out there. And when you go into work and I'm like, they don't even know who I am. And they have no idea that this, there's a whole population out there that they're not addressing. And it's, you know, maybe that's my next thing. <laughs> but <laughs> no, stop, stop. <laughs> no, I, I, so with conscious aging, there is so much richness to it. And those four aspects that I talk about, um, you know, I, I think that are important. They're, every one of them could be a workshop in itself too. There's just so much and there's so much that many people, like I take for granted, as I said, because I've been doing this for so long that um, it's yeah. it's exciting to, to know. And I, I hope, Heidi, there's no accidents. We've met, maybe we can do some <laughs> that would be work great. And, and inspire <laughs> each other to keep going with this message and, and share it. I If you would send me the video of, of this, I will send it to my newsletter as well. So. Um, we are at the end, more or less, of, of our conversation of the hour. Still some minutes, but I would like to ask you, do you have some special advice or some special uh, idea for people who are listening and are still, you know, not really comfortable with getting older, getting all these, you know, things and losing beauty, losing um, maybe some physical abilities, like me going for a walk up the hill? <laughs> You know, I mean, I never liked walk up the hill, but now I'm really <laughs> noticing it. And then I think, is that aging or has it always been like this, you know? So for people in this, in this uh, period of their lives, what, what can you recommend to them? I, I guess the, the major thing that I'm recommending even to myself these days is like, you know, who do, who do you want to be? And when you start asking who we want to be, 
I think that all of us come to a higher version of the, it doesn't have to be the most beautiful person. It doesn't have to be the person who's whatever, you know, walking up hills and uh, you're lucky you're walking up hills. I can barely walk at this point with my hips and my knees and uh, been interesting. And even that, I used to be a dancer and I'm not yet, you know, and, and so um, what, it, what I've learned, I guess to maybe, maybe let me step backwards because I said this before, but I think this is my major message. Instead of looking for what's wrong, look for what could be the gift here. I think we ask that question about anything. We come up with so much richer answer. What's the gift here? Not, you know, why can't I do this? Or what's the matter with me? Or why is this happening to me? All those things bring us down. But when we say what's the gift, initially we may not find it. But I think if we start with that mindset, um, almost anything can turn into a gift, even if it's a tiny thing. I mean, one of the gifts of my being in the hospital like that, I had to learn how to receive not something I did really well. I was out giving all the time. And so I had to let people literally move me. I couldn't move my body my, without help. And um, <clears throat> that was a gift. Didn't feel like a gift at the moment, I have to say, you know, and most of it. <clears throat> and you might even have to have a conversation with somebody else to help you find the gift. I think that's where that's coaching what I in. wanted to say. We need to surround us with people who see these things positively instead of, oh, today is this, and oh, this is this. Oh, horrible, and things like that. This is not the, a good inspiration, no? I have to say, I mainly find it online, <laughs> and so it's also an, um, an, let's say an advice to people. If you don't find it in your community, people who are inspiring you, go online. There are so many groups and so many possibilities, also participating in courses, and so you will find finally somebody to, you know, not only one person, but I think quite a few pe people who can uplift you. you know? I agree. Like, yeah, Are you part of the We Space that Paul has started? Are you in the We Space? Yes. You're in one. Okay. Yeah, we have built a German group, so we are speaking in our own language. So that's good. Ah, so you're German living in Italy. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, I thank you very much. And I hope that people feel inspired. And uh, can you share your, your book again and uh, your website and uh, whatever you want to share for contact? Okay. I, first of all, I'll spell my name because that, that's where you'll find me. It's T-O-N-I-L-A-M-O-T-T-A. -T -T and my website is TonyLamata.com. And so on that website, I have information about my book. And the book is called, you can find the book on Amazon as well and all over the world, Embracing the Aging Process. I have a couple of other books and several other things. I have one called The Spirituality of Aging. And, um, you know, but if you get on my website, you can even get on my mailing list and, and, and get, you know, lots of inspiration when I get it out, I don't always get it out every week, but people do tell me that they're inspired by that. I share what's going on in my own life. I share, I just got an email today that I was inspired by. So today I'm going to send that out to my group. And, you know, that's the kind of thing that they can expect. And I don't send a whole lot. They're not going to get bunches of things. And, um, mm -hmm. So that's that's the main way. And and then maybe look forward to Heidi and I putting together a course on life with you. And, uh, yeah, and that would be great. I would love to do that. So well, let's go come back together after the show, logically. And um, then we will see what comes out of it. And people, if you are inspired and want to do the life course, that would be a incentive if we knew that there are five ten people around who would like to to do this course so we would get some how do you say fire under the butt <laughs> yeah that's it there's there's an energy that happens when other people are doing the work with you 
And you're right, it doesn't have to be in person when you're doing work online. I do most of my work online these days. Mm -hmm. That's been a great gift, actually. And so, yes, let's try it. So if you're listening right now, anybody who's out there listening, um, send either Heidi or send a note to me. And, and uh, my, my email is drtony at tonylamata.com. And um, Heidi, they probably have your email. It's, uh, <laughs> And so, so uh, Heidi, uh, Heidi 56 at M A M E actually M E me in or me it would be me in, in, in English dot com that was the old Apple address uh, so right Heidi right. 56 at me dot com mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. So let us know if you're interested and we'll put together a class and maybe begin the year with it. That might be a nice thing to do at the beginning of start our year out by reflecting. Yeah, and because we all always want to start the new year better and better. And so it's good where we are uh, to know where we are, where we come from. So that would be perfect. So again, Tony, wonderful. Thank you well, very, thank very you. much. Thank you very much. I love it. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Heidi. Thank Excellent. you. Okay.